Hey, 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 you guys. I am comfortable. Is that all right with y'all? I could not force my feet back into those shoes. They were on point, okay? They were on point. But when I tell you, beauty is pain and not today. Not today. Okay, so we're having a six-figure conversation today. I want to know who I am talking to in the room um, number one, raise your hand if this is your first time being introduced to me. You have no idea who I am. Justin, stop it. <laughs> first of all, all right, Donnie Wiggins, business development coach. I work with six and seven figure entrepreneurs, helping you guys to really get clear in your business concept. Like if you're taking notes, which you should be right now, clarity is key. Key to six figures, clarity. I am your clarity coach. I help you get really, really clear in what you serve, how you serve them, who you serve it to, and why you do it. Those are the four main factors or characteristics that I focus on. Uh, right now in this season, I work primarily with entrepreneurs uh, on a personal level anyway that are already making six figures, some seven who are looking to, as I like to say, add arms to their business, like grow different extensions so we can diversify your income and your portfolio. So uh, I'm going to do today, I had something prepared for you guys. Um, but as I'm watching the conference and I realize this is day two, I want to make sure you get exactly what you need. So we're going to do some questions. Six-figure conversations, you guys. How many people in here have not made six figures yet? Raise your, keep your hands raised for me if you have no idea how you're going to get there. Keep your hands raised if you are, okay, you have no idea how to get there. All right, let's get it. <laughs> you like, I am stuck. If you are a service-based entrepreneur, raise your hands for me. Okay, meaning you help someone get a transformation of some sort. You're an accountant, you're a realtor, you're a fitness coach, confidence coach. If you're a product-based entrepreneur, raise your hand for me. Okay, good stuff. Multiple stream of income earners, raise your hand for me. Mm -hmm, that's why y'all not making six figures. Yeah, we focused on too many things at one time. So we're going to get right into it. I want to talk to you specifically about your business, what you need in this season right now. If you have a question for me, go ahead and raise your hand and we're going to get started. Who has a question? Dana, right here. Raise them high, guys. Be proud. We're going to move through this real quick. We only have 45 minutes together. We got questions all over here. Yes. Say your name for me. Hi, Donnie. Um, my name is Aisa McGirl, um, Dr. Issa Marie on Instagram. Um, sorry I fangirled you yesterday. I was just a little shocked. <laughs> um, so I think you kind of just answered what I wanted to know. But so I'm a physical therapist. Um, I also created like programs um, so people can kind of just follow what I kind of like teach. But I also am setting up like a health coaching business and a physical therapy business all at the same time. Um, so I'm kind of wondering, is it doing too much? Because they're all kind of related, but is it doing too much? And is it kind of kind of set me back? I started the business six months ago. Absolutely doing too much. All right. <clears throat> so. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Let me tell you what I think about multiple streams of income. I think they're absolutely necessary. I think you're incredibly irresponsible if you do not have them. However, timing is everything. Say that for me. Timing is everything. I personally, if I were to coach you, I would not encourage or work with you if you were insistent upon creating multiple streams before the first stream got to $20,000 a month in income, period. Wasting my time or yours. We're not making consistent money, and we've not proven the concept enough until you've gotten to about $20,000 a month in income. Now, let me qualify what I mean by that, right? So you have, you said a physical therapy business. You've got a physical therapy clinic, concierge service. So you've got this service. We have got to get that to a point where it's functioning on its own so that you can have the mental capacity to free yourself up to work on an additional stream. So that means that we probably need to invest in systems, team, policies, things like that. We're not really comfortable getting there as I've worked with entrepreneurs now for the last 10 years until we're about $20,000 in income. That also includes caring for yourself. The worst thing that you can do is try to build a business with your back being against the wall. 
So you're already in this one business. It's pulling in three grand. It's pulling in four. Your overhead is about $4,000. So you're still not making any money. Meanwhile, we're trying to juice streams from everywhere else. And we don't have the mental capacity to do it because we hadn't put everything into one. So when it comes to multiple streams of income, Let's get one going first successfully. Create a goal for it. What do you want to see happen? My personal goal is $20,000. Yours, yours could be different. You may say, hey, all I need is $6,000 from this particular stream, and then I'll start to diversify over here. Make sense? But when you're trying to do everything at one time, you can't give anything 100%. You just can't. You can't do all your sales calls. You can't do all your marketing. You can't do all your content. You can't do all your fulfillment in one business. So trying to do that in multiple businesses, you're shooting yourself in the foot and setting yourself up for failure. Is that fair? All right. Or at least being super average and average to me is also failure. Next question. Behind you. Y'all raise y'all's hands high. We want proud questions. Proud and loud. Hi, I do NFTs, but they don't launch monthly. So when you say that we have to have 20K, a launch may have several hundred thousand to several million, but it's not monthly. It can be sporadic. Sure. So how do you determine when you're ready to move forward and go into different streams if that's the case? Yeah, okay, baller. Um, <laughs> I would just do my annual average. So just divide that by 12 months. And if you're averaging about that 20,000, now let me be clear, $20,000 isn't the only answer. That's what, if you were my client, that's a basic parameter that I use before I am going to work with you to open up another can of worms, right? Because we're just not doing enough for my liking to work with you on something else. Your number could be different. It could be $10,000 a month. So do that times the year, multiply it by, or divide it by 12. And if, you're, if you like that number and that business kind of operates on its own, you have team, you have systems, it's very organized. It doesn't need as much of you. Feel it, you'll feel it. Then move on to adding a, a, an additional stream and stay there until you have systems and policies and procedures and team. And then you can move on and move on and move on. And did you guys know that multiple streams of income doesn't just have to be uh, businesses? Like, you can literally invest, so we don't have to work for every single dollar that we earn. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Um, hey. My name is Sianna. I am a self-love coach and a boom breaky practitioner and an artist. Um, so my question to you is, on your journey of entrepreneurship, um, obviously, some well, for me personally, like I have ADHD, and ADHD can be really hard in regarding to being consistent with um, just completing tasks and completing uh, stuff like your careers and stuff. So my question to you is, on your journey, how, what were the easier things that you uh, applied in your life as a routine to create consistency so that you can be able to create those streams of incomes to be successful? Hopefully that's your Easy, girl. <laughs> Nothing was easy, and honestly, consistency is something that you'll struggle with in your business forever. It comes and goes in seasons, right? So there will be moments where you are, or seasons where you're super consistent, you're very focused, you've got things figured out, and you're on a roll. Then life will happen. Something will happen, and you fall off, and you're not as consistent. But for me, to answer your question, some things that kind of keep me balanced and on focus. So these are some things that I call actually my six-figure mindset, and I've just carried it into a now a seven-figure mindset. I have to have a morning routine. It used to be a morning and a night routine, but I also had to be real with myself. The night routine fluctuates. It really depends on the day, right? And because so much of the day has happened, my night routine is difficult to be consistent with, but I attempt to control my day by having a morning routine. So when I wake up in the morning, regardless of anything and everything, I own the first two hours of my day every single day, period. I own the first two hours of my day every single day. That means don't talk to me, don't call me, don't expect anything from me. I'm not emailing you, I'm not texting you. I'm doing exactly whatever Donnie feels her body needs that day. My day typically starts off with meditation because it's really easy for me to commit to doing it before I even get out of the bed. So I'll wake up, 
I'll grab my phone, I'll turn on one of my guided meditations from YouTube, and I do that right there in the bed. It takes 10 to 20 minutes. That's it. Get it out of the way, right? Get it out of the way. Then I uh, will sometimes, I interchange these. I'll either get up and shower and pray in the shower. That's my favorite place to pray, in the shower. Or I'll begin to journal, right? So it's either or. So my morning routine consists of meditation, journaling, and prayer. The reason that this has to happen for me in the morning is because the day can get away from me. The day can get away from me, and I believe in commanding myself of what I expect from myself every single day. That comes in meditation. That comes in journaling. And I journal in two phases. The first phase that I journal in is what happened typically the day before. I, I review what happened the day before, how I felt about it, how, what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it. I curse a whole lot of people out in my journal, too. I do. Emotional intelligence 1.0, baby. Would you rather get cursed out? I curse a lot of people out in my journal. So I usually hold in a lot of thoughts and feelings about people, right? Relationships, some family. Sometimes my daughter has absolutely worked my nerves and I love gently, right? So instead of verbalizing those things, I get it out in my journal. Yesterday, Deja did this. And can you believe after I pay all her bills, she had the audacity to do this, that, and the other. And then I shake it off. I release it. The second half of my journaling is me telling myself what's happening this day. Today is going to be an amazing day. Today I declare that I'm going to have the highest sales day that I've had so far this month. I am going to communicate effectively with my team. I'm going to start off by talking to Kyle and we're going to do X, Y, and Z. I am going to send flowers to my mom. I'm going to do this, that, and the other. Like I'm declaring how I want my day to go. Today is beautiful. Today is amazing. And I always end my journaling with I am believing for the best possible outcome. That is a six-figure setup. I talk to myself nicely every single day. Every single day. It's a setup for six. Six figures happens first in the mind. Six figures happens first in the mind. Whatever you are conditioning yourself to believe about yourself and the things around you and your business and the people in your, in your life, those things will all come true. So I have to first condition my mind for prosperity, condition my mind for abundance. And then I pray in the shower and that's, you know, whatever you guys want to pray with personally. Good. Yes. Hey, so. Oh, hey, girl. Hey, hey, hey okay. So um, I, you said that we should just focus on that one thing, reach that goal and then move forward. So I hear you, but for a hairstylist or a major primary service provider, our time literally is our money. So in order to make that amount of money, you have to incorporate a new service. You have to upcharge or, you know, all of these different things. So how do you balance that? I've, I've capped out on just doing the actual hair. How do I then incorporate the product line and get in those streams of income within that actual business itself? Sure. So talk to me about capping out. Are you making six figures? I am not, but I don't have enough time. You're not charging enough money. So here's the deal. <laughs> Let me sit down. Hold on. No, don't. <laughs> so um, I don't know about anyone else, but I know in Dallas, Fort Worth, it's to the point to where we have all of these newer entrepreneurs. It's like, hey, you better cash at me $15,000 before I do your hair. And then this, it's another 15 when you get there or whatever. So I'm not her. I'm true to what it is that I'm actually doing. So I don't want to just to reach a certain goal, overcharge something that doesn't. That Who I determines to, overcharging? Me. You hear all this chatter? I do. Okay. Tell me about the kind of hair that you do. What, what are you, I'm what a loctician. I'm a lock artist. Girl. Pause. Don't, do, don't judge me. <laughs> Your job is not to manage other people's budgets and worry about what they can afford. 
Okay, pause. Okay. No, 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 no. Your job is not to manage other people's pockets. Your job is to create a goal. Maybe that goal is a hundred thousand dollars, and then your goal, your job at that point is to reverse engineer what it takes to get there. Now, there are people, especially people who wear locks, who take great pride in wearing their hair take great pride in maintaining and growing their hair. And they are willing to pay top dollar because they understand that overpriced is a mindset, right? I pay about $1,500 to get my micro links installed every six weeks. I do know some stylists who charge about $350 to get some micro links installed. I don't like the environment. I enjoy being served champagne and fresh fruit. I like that when, my, when I walk in, the seat is empty because I'm not waiting for anybody else. I pay too much money. My stylist has created an environment that made it make sense for me to pay her $1,500 instead of going to somebody else who might do better hair for $375. When I sit in her chair, the conversation is different. We're talking about things that increase her and I both. $375, we might be gossiping about some people. I get real uncomfortable in environments where we're gossiping about people. So it's worth it to me and my mindset to pay a little bit more money. Overpriced is a mindset and it's relative. Overpriced says who? If there are people in your market who are charging that level of money and people are paying it, that's proof that the price isn't too high. You're just not comfortable charging for it because you don't believe that it's valuable enough. So for those of you who are offering services and there are people who are charging higher rates for a result that you can get, that's a you problem. Somebody just told me to shut up. <laughs> that is a you problem all day long. You have to ask yourself, why Donnie can charge someone $100,000 for the year for coaching, but you're charging $200 a month. I don't have nothing to do with that, sis. I'm not overpriced. You cheap. Think of a number in your head. How much do you think it would cost for me, a pretty successful entrepreneur, to coach you every single day, to give you all of the game? I'm talking about every day for an entire year, Monday through Friday, I'm on, I'm on a, a virtual call teaching you how I've done the things that I've done and me updating you every single day in real time on all the business moves that I'm making, all the negotiations that I'm in, everything that I'm doing before I actually do it. How much you think? And let's say Monday through Friday, and then on Thursdays, we do a Q&A where not only do you get a chance to ask your questions and get them answered, but you get to you get to hear the answer from a whole community, hundreds of other people on a call, and you get their answers that are going to help you too. What do you think? And once or twice a year, get together, free conference that we all get to come to, and you get to meet all these people that you see virtually. How much do you think that would cost every single year? 10000 Not even close. It would probably be closer to 100000 because it's just, I don't, I, I, my, my time is valuable, and to give you the sauce that's going to help you make millions, I'd have to charge you at least 100000 But what I've done is created a community where you get the advantage of learning how to become an entrepreneur. You get to network with hundreds of entrepreneurs every single day. You got a community that keeps you inspired and excited. You will read a book club with us every single day. You'll also have an event where we come together once or twice a year for free. We do all of that for $399 for the year. Now, you can also get it at $79 a month, but $400, bucks, the price it costs for two pairs of Jordans, no tax, of course, you get all of that, $399. Now is the time you join the morning meetup. You've been watching the Social Proof Podcast. You've been watching me build my business. You've seen where it started. And if you're just now like understanding like what's going on with my brand... Go ask somebody. I've got receipts of things that I built over the last decade, okay? Uh, I am willing to coach you. $3.99 for the year. Listen, go to themorningmeetup.com or click the link in this video. Um, let's get back to the episode, but keep in mind, I want to coach you. Let's get started. You are not making enough money. You're a specialist. Specialist 
make six figures. When you go into a doctor's office and you need heart surgery, are you going to the general doctor because they're cheaper or are you going to the heart surgeon who costs 15 times more because they're going to get you the result? The heart surgeon. I'm not letting nobody's primary care physician operate on my heart because my copay was $75. Send me the $15,000 bill. I want to breathe again. Find your value, believe in your value, and up your prices instantly. Then once you do that, right, maybe you're using your products. Maybe your products are the reason that you're able to charge premium pricing. The pricing is premium because the service is premium. I'm using my special products. There's a chick called... Anybody of you guys? Okay, so that's my girl, right? But your girl charged like $3.75 for a wash and press. Natural hair. I went to her one day because I have scalp psoriasis. And she's like, Donnie, I can cure that. It's going to be all gone. I can get rid of it. I go in her salon. It's about this big. She's got the music playing. She's got the diffuser on. Fragrance is in the air. She's got this fresh fruit that's chopped up. I'm like, what are we doing, sis? We making smoothies? She's like, no, this is going in your hair. Oh, fresh oranges, red, ruby red, grapefruit? This is all for my scalp? $375. I pay her this money. I get in the chair. I sit down. She gives me the best shampoo I've ever had in my life. We get to the chair. She blow dries me. And she says, so what are you going to do about a style? <laughs> what? <laughs> this does not include a style? <laughs> no, you pay for premium services for your, the health of your scalp. I charge another $50 if you want something pressed. What? <laughs> but my scalp felt so good. It felt so clean and it smelled so fruity and delicious. Style me up, sis. And we're friends now today because hopefully I got a friends and family discount coming. But I paid her her money and I didn't think twice about it. However, if I had gone to another salon and they're just using Redken and Aveda products and they charged me $375, somebody would have had to call the police at the end. Because I don't see the value in that. All right. Who we got next, Dana? Yes, uh, thank you. One, what are the books you would recommend for us that we could listen to or read to further enhance our ability to earn over six figures? And then the second question is, what are the commonalities that you see among the entrepreneurs that have that breakthrough? What are the key characteristics that they have to make that breakthrough? Those are good questions. So I'm going to give you books directly from my Audible. The first book, though, is Think and Grow Rich. Um, that answers both of your questions, honestly. Think and Grow Rich, when I started to, when I started as an entrepreneur, it used to burn me up that people were just giving me all of this personal development advice. Read these books, listen to this audio, study this, study that. I'm like, look, give me the one, two, threes in the plays. But as I started to really study millionaires and billionaires, when I listened to interviews about their journey, one of the commonalities that I found was they all credited this book, Think and Grow Rich. I'm like, man, let me read this book. And it's a hard read. It is a hard read. And I don't know if it was so much the contents of the book or the fact that I was so determined to read and understand the book that made a difference for me, but Think and Grow Rich is at the top of my list. Um, another book before I get into my audible is The Strangest Secret. The Strangest Secret. OK, uh, my favorite documentary to read, I know by heart, is The Secret. Bob Proctor, Rhonda Byrne. Let me see what I'm reading right now. <laughs> uh, those of you who <laughs> are high ticket, those of you who are high ticket, uh, $100 million offers. OK, $100 million offers. Uh, those of you who are looking for my level of confidence, somebody spoke on it earlier today, the subtle art of not giving a f 
That's my favorite book. <laughs> um, and what's one of my other? Oh, one of my favorite books also, Who Not How. Who Not How. Those are the books. Commonalities, number one, at least in my circle, we read a lot of books. And I won't lie to you and say that every successful person reads books. It's just not the truth. But in my circle, we read a lot of books. And at dinner, we're always having conversations about the things that we read in books. It feels really good. It's a great environment to be in. Um, also, we are obsessive. We are obsessive. Not only are we obsessed about the result, we're obsessed about the journey. Highly inquisitive. If something goes wrong, I don't just accept it as an L. I want to know exactly what happened. Why did this go wrong? We pay attention to our, da our data and analytics, or we have someone on our team who does. A lot of CEOs themselves don't even understand data and analytics. So they have someone on their team who does. Okay? In the beginning, a commonality is that you may find is that we appear to be workaholics. I was absolutely a workaholic for the first several years of my journey. Work, 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 work. I'm on a date talking about work. I'm on a date responding to text messages. And that's really because I blurred the lines of what work and li you know, personal life looked like. I love what I do so much that it really doesn't feel like work to me, but I had to understand that the person sitting across the table from me, it looks like work to them. So finding that balance, which is a nasty B letter word, right? You're never really in balance. Another commonality is understanding that you're never really in balance. Meaning, most people are struggling to balance being a CEO and having a personal life. You're struggling to balance your professional life against your personal life. Let me tell you that it will never, ever happen. It's never gonna happen and I hate to burst your bubble, you're always going to be out of balance. I want you to think about a scale, the kind that people move weight on. Uh. <laughs> I'm from College Park, Georgia, y'all. <laughs> if the scale is balanced, what's happening? Nothing. Nothing. But if I put a little bit more weight on this side, what happens to the other side? And then if I put a little bit more weight on the other side, what happens to the other side? There's movement. There's movement. So you're going to go through seasons where your business is your main focus. In which case, to do that successfully, if you have a family, you have to talk to your family and communicate, hey, guys, I have this goal. This is my busy season. I'm looking to make $100,000 in the next six months. This is what it's going to look like. Six to eight hours a day work. I have conferences planned once every two weeks for the next three months. I'm going to be on conference calls once a week every single Thursday. I need us to all sit around the table and understand this in advance so that we're not emotional in our feelings and bringing more stress because once I reach this goal, this is how you, my family, will benefit. And I'm a whole single woman up here, but I'm helping y'all save marriages. <laughs> okay? Then on the other side, you're going to move into a season where things, you got systems in place, team handling things for you. Everything is just kind of moving. Like, at this point, I work about 10 hours a week. Me. That's it. I be looking for stuff to do. But that's because my systems are so well in place that now I have time to travel and freelance and do all these other passion things that I have to do. So you're either going to be focused in a season on business or you're going to be focused in a season on your personal life. And that is a cheat code, accepting the fact that there is no balance. That doesn't mean that you can't have it all. You can still have it all, but something's going to be out of balance. All right. Where are we, Dana? Okay. Okay. Hi, Donnie. Thank you for your time. Um, I'll start with my question first, and it is, what would be your recommended first step if you turn your nine to five into the six-figure bag, you turn your five to nine into your own six-figure bag, and you wake up and you realize you hate everything that you've built? What is your first step? 
quit it all. No. So, are you saying that you're earning a salary of six figures? Six figure salary, and I've built an agency that's projected to make six figures by the end of the year, and I hate what I do in okay. both instances. Okay. Hello, hello. I did the very same thing. I worked in property management. I had a six-figure job. I worked in property management for 13 years. The last assignment that I worked on, they were incredibly racist. It was a very difficult environment. I hated it, but I made a good salary, six figures. At the same time, I built, I decided that I was going to leverage what I did in my nine to five and build my own company. So I launched my own luxury con uh, concierge and property management company. That was also a six figure company. Now, it was something that was easy for me to do because I had worked in that lane for so many years, but I hated it. Do not call me the next time your water is slowly dripping. I don't care. <laughs> I am on somebody's yacht with somebody's son. Figure it out. I hated it, hated it. Not only that, I focused on luxury properties and I did a lot of business in the building that I lived in. So I would run into clients and I'm like, Jesus Christ, it became overwhelming to just get on the elevator because somebody had an issue, hated it. So what I did was started something that I actually liked on the side. Yes, a third thing, because I could not just quit cold turkey on everything. I did let go of the job because my business at least was mine. I couldn't stand those people. Y'all heard me tell this story, some of y'all. I used to go to work every single day, pull up to the front, play that eight ball and MJG song. I, <laughs> hey, <laughs> feeling real orange mound in here, okay? Eight ball's my favorite artist. So I said, if I hate them both, but I make enough money from one, I'm at least going to do what I hate for myself and keep 100% of the money. So I let go of the job. I went into the business, and then I started doing something else, which was focusing on coaching. And then I allowed that to grow, and once that grew and was able to fully support me, I let that go. So you have to start backing yourself out of that. Put a plan together. You don't, have, you don't need two six-figure opportunities. You can turn one into a multiple six-figure opportunity and then allow something else to grow to replace it until you find what you love to do. So, hi, Donnie. Hey. <laughs> so this is not a question. This is actually just a statement real quick for you. You're in the perfect place. Pay me in equity. Find somebody here that loves your business. Sell it to them and still keep a portion of it and have some passive income. Or that. Hi, Donnie. Can you talk us about how you walk visionaries when we talk a lot about scaling up, but what about when they need to scale down when they're trying to start? How do they, they have this big picture of what they want to accomplish and they need to set the priorities and benchmarks in order to get there? You just did it. Which, <laughs> Slow down, set your priorities and benchmarks in order to achieve the goal. So that's a really good question. So we're talking about a beginner entrepreneur who's like doing the most, right? I get a lot of that with entrepreneurs. Yep, so I'm, a, I'm about to make $250,000. I got this, 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 and then I'm going to do the high ticket and this. How much money? Have we made $5,000 yet? Have we? The answer is no. Okay, so we're going to use a little less of your ideas and a little bit more of mine, all right? And the first thing that we do is create what is the goal that we need to maybe replace the income on your job. If you're working and you are building your business, if your job has been fully supporting your lifestyle, goal number one, let's just earn what we earn on our job. We don't have to go from making $55,000 a year to $250,000 in our business. Why put that pressure on yourself? You've never done that before. Can we just make $55,000 from our business first? So we create the minimum goal expectation for income. Then we break down what we need to do to make that happen. So you are making some money. You've got 13 different offers. Talk to me about the two that's making the most money. Because when you have all these offers, because you're trying to scale so fast, the first thing that we're going to do is cut every single last one that isn't making money. 
because the time you spend talking about a non-income producing offer is time that you're taking away from the one that could be making money. Some of y'all got some non-income producing offers in your bio right now. I won't be offended if you pull out your phone and go ahead and delete them. If I go into your page, first of all, if you aren't making six figures, you have no business offering more than two things. You giving us a whole bunch of nothing to choose from? You just putting out a whole bunch of different ways that you are not making any money? Like, think logically about what we're doing. You have to get rid of the non-income producing streams, okay? Then I want you to talk to me about the two, maximum three, that are actually making money. And I'm not talking about $200 here, $200 there. What's consistently making money? We're going to go all in on those things. All in on those things. We're going to get those up consistently, create goals for those. And then I'll recommend that we add another goal. Usually with my CEOs, and it doesn't matter what level you're on, intermediate or advanced, I allow you to create three goals. What are the three goals that we're going to focus on between now and the next 12 months? Usually you will accomplish those goals before that 12 months is up, but we're going to focus on three. And then of all those three goals, I break down three things that we need to do in order to hit those three goals. So we've got three goals and three things under each of those goals that we need to be focused on. And then we're staying accountable every single week to those three things until we hit those goals. Not until you accomplish one goal can we add another one. That's how I keep you on track and focused. And then not until we get to the point where you can start putting systems and team in place do we get to more elaborate, elaborate goals, more detailed, more advanced goals because I don't want to stress my CEOs out. Does that help? Four minutes, one more question. Hey, how you doing? Uh, I'm Coach Dre, I uh, run an international fitness business. So um, right now I have uh, over 500 clients paying me every month. So I'm trying to get to seven figures. I mean, I'm, I'm doing six figures uh, pretty easy. I work less than 10 hours a week like you, um, but I'm trying to get to seven figures. So how do I do that? Because I don't want to double the price because I'm already above the average price for, the, for my marketplace. So I'm trying to figure out my next step. Add more people. So like Facebook ads and stuff? Like, yeah. I mean, I never, I never get more people. Ads, so maybe I should do some ads there or hire somebody to do ads for me. But. Yeah, so uh, you could do either. You're doing, like, when we say multiple six figures, give me a range. Uh, I'm doing 20000 a month. You single? Yeah, oh, no. Ladies? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. You're not single? No. Nah. He was confused for a minute. No, Depends on who's, <laughs> <laughs> who's asking. <laughs> Who wants to know? <laughs> Donnie, it could go down. <laughs> then I opened it up to the room, and it's like, no, no, no. Definitely got a girl. Um, anyway, yeah, I would, I would think about uh, for you, so very general advice because I don't know your business model, but you could add things like a meal plan. You might want to add like some uh, fitness apparatus like leg bands yeah, and those I got, things. Um, biker shorts, waist trainers. So I, I have all of that, but um, I'm Is just trying to get to my uh, reoccurring you know You're saying? recurring? Yeah. Sure. So yeah. then you need to run ads. You just need more exposure. If you've got 500 people paying you, you're already there. So you need to get more exposure. So for you, I would say build a text community, maybe start giving out some free fitness advice on a weekly basis. Give people maybe a, a week trial into your membership to get them in there. You can also just run some straight ads, uh, hire an ads team. If you are making $250,000 a year, you can, you're in a position where you can hire an ads team or you can bring somebody in-house to help you do that. You can also start um, getting real heavy on your organic marketing. And I don't mean just like posting on Instagram. I mean seeking out like podcasts and things like that. Okay? You just need it. You just have an exposure issue. All right, you guys. So we are good on time. All right. So with that being said, I am around. We're going to go upstairs. Dana, what time is it? You just watched this whole episode. If you like this episode, watch this one right here. Click right here. You're going to like this one if you like the one you just watched. Check it out.